Thanks for watching County Report this week. I'm Susan Kennedy. We begin this week with our latest run of winter weather and the tens of thousands of residents who were left without power for days as a result. The Montgomery County Council had already scheduled an update on PEPCO's reliability and progress. Now the February 7th meeting will expand to include discussion of the utility's performance. He previously declined that invitation and I've asked him to reconsider it as is our council president. We believe it most appropriate for the CEO, president and chairman to come before this community and to hear our concerns and to explain from his perspective what they're trying to achieve and why their performance has been what it has been. This is, as I believe Mr. Rigby understands, an infrastructure issue. They have allowed their infrastructure to age. It is week. That is why on sunny days we have a utility that operates in the lowest quartile in the nation. If you have a utility that operates in the lowest quartile in the nation on sunny days, you can imagine that a storm only accentuates that problem. So that's why we are suffering. We have a weak system that they did not invest in and now we need some answers and we need it to, for them to accelerate their investment. And now Pepco is coming to us and asking for another rate increase. They want $50 million more a year from Montgomery County uh, to make improvements to provide the service that they should be providing anyway. Um, and I really don't feel that we should pay. I think that they should pay. I think that they can reduce their profits and provide the investments that we need uh, and that we really have been paying for all along. The PEPCO work group appointed by County Executive Ike Leggett is extending the deadline to participate in an online survey of PEPCO customers in order to receive the broadest possible ranges of feedback about their experiences with the electric utility company. To take part in the survey, go to surveymonkey.com slash s slash PEPCO residential. The survey is available through Monday, February 7th. County Executive Ike Leggett met with senior GSA and federal officials to discuss the federal sector's construction in the county. Currently, Montgomery is home to 19 federal agencies, but there is a disparity when it comes to federal rental and construction caps that is limiting the economic growth. Lorna Virgili was at the forum. Lorna? Susan, local and federal officials meet in order to discuss the future construction of federal agencies in Montgomery County. A forum with senior GSA officials, commercial real estate professionals, and members of Congress, all to figure out how the federal government can work with the county to lease and build office space in Montgomery. We have a plan field now that does not recognize the contributions that we've made in terms of investments. And so all I want is simply to have a better, more transparent and a fair plan field. And then obviously we will be able to benefit in the long run. 45,000 federal employees already work in the county. The dialogue was to ensure the federal government that Montgomery is committed to federal facility retention and growth. Uh, it meets the goals of the Obama administration in terms of smart growth and transit-oriented development, pedestrian-friendly locations um, with our um, 11 metro stops that are in the county. Uh, that's tremendously attractive to agencies. Uh, we have 19 agencies already here. We're doing everything that we can to make sure that they have a, a welcome home here. Uh, we want to retain them in this county and we want to recruit newer agencies uh, that are popping up in the federal government to locate uh, here in the county. We think it's a, a great place to live and work and we've made that very clear to the federal agencies that the county executive and I have been meeting with. One of the current challenges is the federal rent cap of approximately $34 per square foot in the county, which limits federal agency expansion. Number one, uh, we're going to try and get rid of the rent caps altogether. Uh, if that doesn't work, we would look at one uh, rent cap for the entire Washington region. And if that doesn't work, we need to change the rent caps, especially as they relate to new construction and major renovation, so they're much more in line with the real costs of building in Montgomery County and Prince George's County. Montgomery officials highlight that the workforce and access to the nation's capital makes the county a perfect fit for more federal real estate activity. In other news, members of the county council have received a report from the Montgomery Organizational Reform Commission. The panel was charged with the task of guiding the county towards creating efficient models of providing services and operations. The council heard recommendations that could save the county tens of millions of dollars. 
we uh, dealt into a number of different uh, organizations within the county government, looking at the structure, uh, looking at how they were operated and how we could possibly come up with some cost savings and some efficiencies within in those departments. It was a tough job. I mean, when you, when you start to dig down into the roots of the plant, sometimes you don't want to kill the plant. You have to come up with a way of bringing it forward without uh, destroying everything. We identified a minimum of about $30 million in savings, uh, but we actually think the potential is much, much higher than that. Uh, could conceivably be even hundreds of millions of dollars in savings uh, from the organizational changes that we came up with and also the changes that we suggested in the collective bargaining process. Uh, the one thing I do want to say is we were tremendously impressed with the dedicated and talented workforce that the Montgomery County has, both in the county government and the teachers at Montgomery County Public Schools, uh, and we won't, don't want to do anything to damage uh, the wonderful support that county residents get from the workforce in Montgomery County. Still ahead on County Report this week, a local green business achieves a first for our region. Also ahead, we'll take a visit to the Historic Pools General Store. I'm Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer. Coming up next, the city's getting ready to ring in the new year in a special way. We'll have that story when County Report this week continues. Welcome back to County Report. Montgomery County Police have charged a former Catholic priest who was employed by Georgetown Prep with sexual abuse. Captain Paul Starks is here with the details. Captain, what is the story here? Well, Susan, Garrett David Orr, age 57, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, was a priest employed by Georgetown Prep between the years of 1989 and 2003. In June of 2010, a victim came forward to police and stated that he had been inappropriately touched by Orr in 1989. As detectives furthered the investigation, in December of 2010, another victim came forward and stated that he too had been touched inappropriately by Orr in the year 2002. Detectives worked with local police in Pennsylvania. Orr turned himself in on January 25th where he was charged with two counts of child abuse and one count of third degree sexual offense. He posted bond and, and is released. So, Captain, what should folks do if they believe they might have been victimized by this man? Anyone can call the Family Crimes Division. Detective Mastrangelo can be reached at 240-773-5432. Okay, good work. Thanks very much, Captain Paul Starks, Montgomery County Police. Rockville's recent strategic scan showed that one in three residents are Asian, and so as a way to reach out to the Asian community and celebrate diversity and multiculturalism, the city is planning another celebration of the Chinese New Year. Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer has more. Bridget? That's right, the city's celebration of Lunar New Year is happening again. We had the chance to check in with Asian Pacific American Task Force member John Lin to get a preview on what to expect for this year. Last year's Lunar New Year's celebration proved to be a huge success, taking place at the F. Scott Fitzgerald Theater. And this year, the excitement is building yet again for the city's celebration of the third annual event. John Lin of the Asian Pacific American Task Force stopped by City Hall to tell us what to expect at this year's event. They've never been to the New Year celebration, they're going to be shocked. Because <laughs> uh, last year we have so many different performance groups, and the, the quality of those uh, groups uh, it's almost the uh, Radio City uh, you know, quality and, and really first class performance. The event is free and celebrates the Asian New Year. Lunar New Year is um, the old calendar year that the, uh, most of the Asians are using and use the animals. Uh, every 12 years you rotate and go back to the, uh, uh, the first one. Uh, so next year will be a rabbit and this year is a tiger. Lunar New Year is just one of the outreach programs sponsored by the Asian Pacific American Task Force, a group established in 2008 by the Mayor and Council in an effort to strengthen ties between the Asian American community and the city. We'd like to uh, uh, put in the time to bridge the uh, communication between the Asian communities and the city. 
most of the Asians, they care, they care most, mostly about their business, their, you know, their jobs and other things. Uh, they really have no clue what the city is doing, uh, and vice versa. Most of the Asians, when they think about the Maryland side, you know, they want to come over here, they think about Rockville. So this is the center. If you haven't been to this event before, you got to see it because we, we have a lion dance and then we also have a red ribbon dance and many different singers and they're, I guarantee you they're like professionals. This year's Lunar New Year event is happening Saturday, February 12th at the F. Scott Fitzgerald Theater and Social Hall at Rockville Civic Center Park, located at 603 Edmonston Drive. The event is sponsored by the Mayor and Council and the Asian Pacific American Task Force. To learn more about the task force or Lunar New Year, go online to rockvillemd.gov. We have the first certified B corporation in Montgomery County, Clean Currents, a green energy company located in the Rockville Innovation Center, has become the first business headquartered in the county to become a certified B corporation. This certification requires businesses to solve social issues and environmental problems by meeting comprehensive social and environmental performance standards. The certification process requires the company to change its governing documents to include the consideration of the environment. In order to be certified as a B Corps, you have to put in your legal operating agreement for a company that you will uh, adhere to sustainability principles. And beyond that, you also have to put your scorecard on your website so anybody in the world can come to cleancurrents.com and see how we're doing as far as our environmental impact. We're doing very well there. Uh, our commitment to diversity, uh, transparency, um, stakeholder engagement, a variety of things that make a co corporation a good player in its community. Certified B corporations also meet higher legal accountability standards. Clean Currents was also the first in the county to be certified through the Green Business Certification Program. They sell green power to residential and commercial clients in the region. The current superintendent of schools, Dr. Jerry Wiest, announced his retirement effective at the end of the current school year. As part of the process of hiring a new superintendent, the Montgomery County Board of Education held community forums this past week to ask parents and citizens what they are looking for in the next school superintendent. Leslie Maxwell has our story. Community members, parents, and MCPS staff gathered January 31st for the first in a series of public forums to tell the Montgomery County Board of Education what kind of superintendent they want to lead the school system. This would be my last contract. Dr. Jerry Wiest, who has been superintendent for nearly 12 years, will retire at the end of June. The Board of Education is conducting a national search to replace him. I just think that... At a forum at White Oak Middle School in Silver Spring, there was consensus among most parents that they want a strong leader who already has experience running a large school system as complex as MCPS. I want him to come with a track record of um, balancing a budget, of partnering with the community, of understanding diversity in Montgomery County. Math, science, reading, all that. When it came to specific priorities that a new superintendent should have for the school system, the parents expressed a wider range of viewpoints. I think it's really important, one, to maintain the, the excellence that we have in our teachers, in our classrooms, in our curriculum, but I think it's really important not to lose sight of the fact that active children and well-fed children will perform better. So as we look at the gaps in performance, if we continue to stress only academics and don't look at the whole child, we're missing a big opportunity. Community group. Hazard Young, Atia and Associates, the search firm hired to assist the Board of Education, will compile the input from parents and community members in a final report. That report will help the Board decide which qualities to look for in candidates for the superintendent's job. We will be recruiting candidates based on that criteria and really aggressively looking at who's out there and who might be a potential match and trying to encourage those people right. to consider this as a great opportunity in their career. The search firm will compile all the feedback and report back to the Board of Education by February 14th. Still to come on County Report this week, getting up to speed with your auto repair skills right here in Montgomery County. 
and Kathy Stanhope will be here with a sweet girl looking for a new home. We'll be right back. Welcome back to County Report. Pools General Store closed its doors at the end of last year after 45 years of service. The building has stood off River Road in Seneca for more than 100 years, and the Department of Parks would like to see it stay for 100 more. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Are you responsible for all of that? Partly. I'm not the graphic designer, but I helped in the It's marvelous. Thank you very much. My name is Jamie Coons. I'm senior historian for Montgomery County Parks. Uh, well, the pool store, the building that's behind me, was built in 1901 by Frederick Allnutt. Uh, he was a local merchant here in Seneca. Uh, he bought the land, 3.5 acres, from Wilson uh, Shefaley. And uh, when he bought the property, that included the Upton Darby House, which is directly behind the store. But he built the store in 1901. Uh, he operated the store until 1915 when he died, and it was a general store. Uh, when he passed away, his son-in-law, Guy Allnut, took over the family operations. We're dealing with some, uh, we have a lot of issues here we need to resolve. Got some structural integrity issues. Oh, I'm sure. And then in 1965, Raymond Poole took over the store, and him and his wife, Billy, and their children operated the store until last year, uh, December 2010. Because of health problems, Raymond and Billy Poole closed the store for good on December 31st. Folks got together to reminisce. But this place was part of my childhood, and then when we moved back to the area, it was served our gardening needs. When I was 14, I used to hitch my pony up to this kitchen post outside the store, go in and get a sandwich. This was a wall, and that was the back room, and that was the back room, right parts. The walls could only fall apart. Right. It's a shame. There's a piece of American history. One of the folks said, it's just a, a shame that uh, it's not still open, and I agree with him. I think it's a, it, as soon as we can get this uh, uh, store uh, back the way people remember it, will be a good thing for the community. In the meantime, we have an interim operation providing feed uh, for uh, supplying the community with the products they need to get their uh, farms supplied during the winter months as we determine the ultimate fate of the property and uh, who's gonna move in here next. The Pools had leased this property from the Montgomery County Department of Parks since 1976. Hey, hey, how you doing today? The Department of Parks had an open house on January 29th to find a new tenant for this historic site. What's that? My name is Matt Markoff from Kaleva Outdoors. This is commercial. Uh, that's the commercial and this is residential. We're trying to figure out how Kaleva can help facilitate to keep this the pool store, the general store that helps out the, you know, the farmers in this area and is, uh, and is a benchmark for uh, agricultural community. I and mean, I think if you can get the people that are selling the horse feed, then you can probably you know, sell some stuff off the shelves. We'd like to see it remain a store um, and maybe have another 110 years worth of history. It's a chance for a change, and now that it's going to change, you guys will accept it. So let's go on and take the next step forward. One sector of the job market where there's plenty of hiring going on is the automotive technologies field. But to land a job in the auto repair field, you need a good education. And in our area, one of the best places to get the education you need is at Montgomery College. MCTV student reporter Sophia Reeves has the story. Let's start with an overview of the automotive technology program at Montgomery College. Well, the automotive program is designed and structured to take a student and teach them how to repair automobiles. Our program is designed for light duty truck and passenger vehicles and it's designed to teach the eight areas of study for ASE certification. So the first purpose is industry certification in automotive repair. The second purpose is that we also have four specialty certificates. So a student can earn a college Maryland State recognized certificate in an automotive area specialty. And then we also offer an AAS degree, which is an applied science degree in automotive technology. Let's first talk about the degree program. Well, there are 68 credits required for the degree. The classes involve general education courses, and then the major courses, and that's classes like brakes, suspension steering, electrical, um, engine performance, transmissions, etc. 
And the certificate program, what specialties can you earn the degree in? We offer four certificates, and those certificates are undercar specialist, um, engine performance specialist, powertrain specialist, and automotive electrical specialist. What can the students expect to experience when it comes to the balance between classroom and work and hands-on? We have pretty much an equal focus on lecture or classroom component and lab component. So most of our classes are about three hours of lecture and about three and a half to four hours of lab. What kind of success has MC students enjoyed in the industry? Well, we're very lucky in the area where we're located in that it's very dense in automotive repair facilities, government repair facilities, and automotive dealerships. So the students coming out of the program um, usually don't have a problem finding employment. Now it's time for Kathy Stanhope with our pet of the week, a mature dog named Maya. Hi, this is Kathy Stanhope with your pet of the week, and we're at the Montgomery County Humane Society, and we're here with Maya. Maya is a lively old girl. She is 12, but she is acting just like a puppy here. I've just met her, and she's friendly, and she's lively. She still loves to take walks, and she loves to play fetch. And I'm told one of her favorite things is belly rubs. She just loves to roll over and have that little belly rub. Now, she's kind of a sad situation because Maya, unfortunately, is here because her owner died. Her previous owner died, and someone brought her here because no one was willing to take her in. And she really wants to go home. So if there's any soft-hearted person out there who wants to have a dog who can give her a good home, who's here for no fault of her own, she's here only because her owner died and can't take care of her anymore. So come down and meet Maya. She's a great dog, and she really wants to go home. She gets along well with older children. She's maybe not so good with other pets. She likes some dogs. She doesn't like other dogs. So if you do have another dog in your house, maybe another senior citizen dog, you could maybe let them meet and see how they get along. Like I said, she likes some of them, but not all of them. And remember, the winter can be hard on dogs, particularly older dogs like Maya, right? Be very careful if you're using antifreeze either in your car or in some pipes in your house. Antifreeze is very, very dangerous, very poisonous to dogs. And also, don't ever leave your dog or cat alone in a, in a room with a space heater in it. Space heaters are dangerous to begin with, but we know that sometimes you have to use them. But please don't leave your pet alone in a room with a space heater. It can be a disaster. All right, come on down and see Maya or another dog just like her here at the Montgomery County Humane Society. Give us a call at 240-773-5967 or visit us on the web at mchumane.org. Come meet Maya and you just might go home with your new very best friend. Right, girl? Up next on Counter Report, extending the life of your household appliances in a green way. And a local look at a national effort to think about what we eat and where it comes from. Keep it here on County Report This Week. Welcome back. This week, our friends from Montgomery Community Media tell us about the benefits of having an EchoSoft water system in your home. We make a difference in the world by simply reducing our dependence on bottled water. Filtering your own water and using a reusable water bottle will help our environment a lot. And with me is Scott Handy from Mr. Water Professional Water Treatment. Why should we switch to water filtration? Well, I would say the main reason is, you know, you've, you've got all these bottles that are going to the landfill, uh, the energy it takes to make plastic bottles, which are made out of oil. You can get a system like this and purify the own water in your house. What are some of the things that we should, you know, what things that people sh should be worried about? I mean, mm -hmm. I know there's like bacteria and this customer, chemicals. This customer happened to have bacteria in the water and it made um, necessary to get a whole host of water treatment equipment because this customer's on a well. The water's acidic. And um, the main reason they, they did this was to make this UV light, which you can't see right now, which is up on the uh, ceiling here. Uh, so it would work properly. When it comes to your filter, how exactly does it work? Well, it's kind of complicated. Um, what you have here is an acid neutralizer, which um, is like an antacid tablet for the water. The water that comes out of the well in this area is acidic, and it was eating the piping in the house. So the acid neutralizer um, imparts calcium into the water, and then it goes into the water softener, which is over here. The water softener takes the calcium back out, and then it goes through a carbon filter, which is this blue filter right here, 
which takes up pesticides, herbicides, makes the water taste better. It's like a large Brita filter for the house. And then it goes into the UV light, which kills the bacteria and viruses in the water. Carbonated soda, seltzer, tonic, and sparkling water are all regulated as a soft drink compared to bottled water companies who just in the last five years alone have jeopardized the safety of our clean water by half a million times. So think about that next time you reach for a bottle of water. Now here's Mark Richardson from Brookside Gardens with some news on the upcoming Green Matter Symposium. Hi, I'm Mark Richardson. I'm the Adult Programs Manager here at lovely Brookside Gardens. I'm standing in our, in our auditorium in our visitor center today, where on February 25th we'll hold our annual Green Matter Symposium, this year called Real Food Renaissance. For the next two years, and for last year as well, Brookside Gardens has been celebrating a food theme. Last year's symposium, Food for Thought, invited some prominent speakers like Anna LePay, uh, author of a recent book called Diet for a Hot Planet, and really focused on issues pertaining to sustainability and the uh, local food movement. This year, uh, with Real Food Renaissance, we're trying to encourage people to have fun uh, eating, cooking, enjoying their food again this year. Uh, and so we'll be inviting Carla Hall uh, from Bravo's Top Chef uh, for, uh, to be our final speaker of the day. And she'll be talking about just really getting back into the kitchen and, and enjoying food preparation again. Uh, we'll also feature Jonathan Bloom, who wrote a book recently, which is very critical of uh, the amount of food that's wasted in the U.S. each year and really examines the issue from top to bottom and gives some real uh, great solutions for how to minimize the amount of food that we waste in the U.S. each year. Should be a great day. We've got a ton of great speakers. Uh, Green Matter Symposium, Real Food Renaissance, February 25th, 2011, 8.30 a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. here at Brookside Gardens. Look to brooksidegreen.org for more information and we'd love to see you there. That does it for County Report this week. Tune in again next week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Susan Kennedy. Thanks for watching. Sign up for Montgomery College Alert today. Receive college closing delay and emergency information via text message and email. The service also sends important information about Montgomery County weather and traffic events. MC is one of 40 community colleges selected to pilot the volunteer framework of accountability to measure success among two-year colleges. This national effort will help the college to better focus its resources and report its needs to the community. MC has signed an educational partnership agreement with the Naval Service Warfare Center in Carter Rock. Students will benefit from the staff expertise, facilities, and equipment at Carter Rock. The partnership will also help encourage interest in science, mathematics, and engineering, and help develop the local workforce of tomorrow. For more information about the endless possibilities at your community college, visit our website.